Well, it is my favorite thing in the whole world to make. Spaghetti with clams. That's it. I could make that, I could eat that every single day the rest of my life. Squidding spaghetti, zucchini, lemon. Life It's a combination of magic and pasta. Mark Vetri, and I'm the chef owner of uh, the Vetri family. Vetri just kind of started off with my vision of what food from Italy looks like. I never liked food that was kind of too complicated and too thought out. I always like to simplify things. It's all about product and uh, technique, and that's it. So this one is spinach gnocchi. This is all spinach. We actually just blanch it off. Um, Stick it in a Roboku. Just hold it together with a little bit of flour, egg, a little bit of breadcrumb, a little bit of Parmesan, some nutmeg, and you know, that's it. That's why we have to make them in order because they're just like, like otherwise, they're just gonna fall apart. My family's from Italy, and you know, I was raised on that simple type of food. You know, you stick two flavors, and like, that's the dish. We're highlighting one ingredient. Vetri basically was the first restaurant. This is, you know, what my whole life led up to. I started off working in restaurants when I was probably 15 years old, washing dishes. In 1990, I actually moved out to Los Angeles to go to music school. In order to make a living out there, I used to work evenings at the restaurant. I was actually working for Wolfgang. He was like the hottest, really, chef in the nation then. And sometimes skip school, head into the restaurant a little early just to watch and learn. That was really my restaurant school, you know, like I never had formal restaurant school training. The music thing was, you know, sort of not heading anywhere. And I was really liking restaurants. So I had this opportunity to go to Italy, and I just went. That's where I really started to think that, wow, this is, you know, this is really something that, that I would love to, to do the rest of my life. I worked all over the place. And then in 1998, I was 31 years old, and I was like, this is it. I'm ready to open up. So I looked around a little bit in New York, but I ended up coming home to Philadelphia, because this is my home. The restaurant scene when I opened was spotty here and there. Nobody was really talking about Philadelphia as a restaurant city. When I opened up Vetri, that was like the goal. That was like I had, you know, sort of reached the mark. I was like, well, I have my own restaurant. As the years went on, it got a little bit more refined and it was a little bit not accessible to everybody. I decided, well, you know, let's open up something a little bit more accessible, you know, and that's when we the Osteria concept started to happen. And after that, it was just like the rollout, you know, started. We're like, wow, this is kind of neat, you know? I like opening up restaurants. The process have changed. The pappardelle is off the menu this evening. Adam Leonti started with me eight years ago now. He was like 21 years old. He's kind of stopped in here, and he was like, hey, I'd love to hang out. And I, you know, saw he really loved it. He really thinks like I do and about food and about work. He's actually been the head chef here for the last four years. It's a really awesome, you know, relationship we have. We're all about evolution, we're all about learning. This place is ever evolving. And I think to keep a restaurant at a high level, you have to reinvest not only the, the money, but you also have to reinvest the thought that actually goes into the restaurant. So last night, we started off the evening here at Vestry. Me and Adam decided to head over to Morimoto. All right sitting at the sushi bar and just like letting them make whatever. It's awesome. I never even order. I just like make me some, some sushi. You're gonna get something that like there's no way you could ever have here otherwise. You know? I think it's right up here on the left. Yeah, there it is. That's pretty good. Morimoto is one of my favorite restaurants in Philadelphia. Since it opened, I've had a lot of my most memorable meals there, sitting at the sushi counter. That's always where I like to sit. And those guys, man, they just always blow it out. I'm waiting for this. They just always have the freshest items. Some sushi, sashimi, whatever, yeah. Chef's choice. Salud. So I think he actually started us off with like the baby eels with a little bit of the egg yolk and a little bit of soy sauce on there. So fresh. After that, we went into like a steamed abalone. We went into some Japanese mackerel. 
think we had some Japanese snapper. All right. Boom. Boom. Mm. Oh, the texture. Oh. Man, you know, so the rice is just like a little warm. Fuck. Fucking unbelievable. I wanted to talks about rice when they eat sushi, but this rice is just like a little bit warm. And it's just like the perfect texture of rice every time. I love just like sitting and just watching how they use their knives. So when I was in LA, I worked at a sushi bar just to learn all about like knife work from the sushi chefs. And man, they just taught me everything. They were so immaculate with everything, so precise with everything. They always like make a slice and then they wipe the knife down and they always like place it in like the same area. I often tell my line cooks to just head over there, sit at the sushi bar, not even eat, just like learn, just watch how they work. You know, that's the right way to work. How are you doing? Good, how are you doing? While we were eating there, Adam's friend Steve from high school just happened to be rolling into Philadelphia. Have a seat. All right. These are the maestro chefs right here. That's unbelievable. Yeah, they're no joke. Look at that. That beef. The belly. To the belly. Cheek. Cheek. Ah. To the cheek. Look at that. It looks Holy like Kobe beef. Holy shit, I gotta take a picture. <laughs> no, Hold it on. does. I, I mean, look at it. It's fucking ridiculous. Super Toro. Or holy fucking shit Toro. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is like a piece of gold. Dude, that was ridiculous. Holy shit. Jesus Christ, this is like the I know. best got, meal I've ever we, had in my life. Got, <laughs> <laughs> just by We gotta accident. eat after this, just saying, so. I don't even want him to stop. I, I don't know. care, I'll throw up or something. Shit fuck balls. There's just nowhere like it anywhere. I think that we're so lucky to have that here in Philadelphia. Thank you so much. Signore. We asked the chef Hiroki son to come hang out with us. He was happy, he, was, you know, he hadn't eaten yet. Man, that super, super Toro. Super Toro. <laughs> Man, too, too greasy, but yeah, but <laughs> for, 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 one piece for one piece. Yeah, it's great. Now we are heading over to Canela. Yes. That's the oh, <laughs> You ever eaten there before? Have you been to Canela? No. Oh never. my God, dude. Never? Oh yeah. Oh, uh, you're gonna love it. Cypriot food, not Greek. I know. Cyprus. Canela, another, you know, one of my all-time favorite Philadelphia restaurants. It's all Cypriot food, food from Cyprus. The chef owner there, Constantinos, is just an amazing friend of mine, and I've known him since he's opened up a restaurant there. And he's just like the real deal. You know, that guy, he's there every night, just making incredible flavors. Canella started about seven and a half years ago. Canella means cinnamon in Greek, Portuguese, Italian, French, you name it. Being from Cyprus, I'll say it's a Greek Cypriot uh, cuisine. Cyprus is in the Eastern Mediterranean, 12,000 years of history. We've been conquered many times by different nationalities, with the Turks, the Venetians, French, the Arabs were there. All those influences came all in one plate at Canella. That's what I explored. But at the same time, I keep it simple and I keep it as traditional as possible. That's the lamb dumplings. Ooh. Mediterranean style. <laughs> Holy shit. Lamb dumplings. So it's just like lamb, kind of sausage meat, with some yogurt. What's the spices in this? Aleppo, sumac. Sumac. Cayenne. Yeah. The cayenne is of meat, mint, and something else. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That's spicy. Yeah. It's just like the right amount of heat, the right amount of lamb, with the right amount of noodle. It was amazing. After that, he brought out some, some octopus, which was just like as tender as you've ever had octopus before and as flavorful. So octopus here, we, we serve it grilled. As I'm doing that, I'll be sauteing the jam beans. Octopus is forming up now, you can see. I'll finish it up with, guess what, on a lemon. Uh, the jam beans there, simple as that. The octopus is still the best ever. I like it. Bobby? Yes. Adam? Nice to meet you. Also, Steve's friend Robert showed up. Welcome to Philadelphia. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Never actually spent time here, so it's yeah. kind of cool. I have the lamb short ribs with tabbouleh. 
Once he starts bringing out food, it's just like one thing is always just more amazing than the last thing. It's unbelievable. Oh, man. And then it was like, there's one more thing, and wait for it, and it was this wood pigeon, which was like, I don't know what it was, man. It's just like, you ate it, and it was just like melted in your mouth, and just flavor. Oh my god, dude. Mm. Oh my god. I don't know what the hell he did to it. It's just unbelievable. But we'd love a little something sweet. Yeah. Which he makes this incredible semolina cake, which we just fawn over. And then obviously, you know, you have to have the baklava. Oh, awesome way to end a the meal there. <laughs> that was good. And then after that, we, since Vetri is about four blocks away, we just walked up the street. Man, that is one snowy city. Hi. Check it out. We got, we got a clarinet for this guy. <laughs> Thank you. You got a clarinet? Is this a, oh my God, I'm sure this is a serious clarinet, too. Yeah, Luckily, man, we had these amazing musicians stop over with their instruments, and we had a little bit of a jam session. They were eating here earlier, so I invited them. We still have to make some food first. You play, and I'm going to make food. decided to make a little fresh noodles for everyone. I had some flour that you know, we actually milled that afternoon. I just made a little fresh egg dough, rolled it out with the hand roller, sliced it up into tagliatelle. We made pistachio pesto sauce, you know, to go with everything. You have the flavor of the wheat, you have the texture of the noodle, and then you have like one strong, prominent flavor with the pistachio nuts. I think that's the way to eat. Tito, everybody. Everyone started to show up. A whole bunch of folks from Morimoto and from Canelo showed up. Still some folks here from Vetri, you know, so we're all just hanging out. It's really nice. I like that. It's really nice. It's nice. It's simple. What were you? Yeah. yeah, OK. I've been playing the, the guitar since I was probably nine years old, and I never stopped. It's a huge part of my life. It's always nice to just kind of sit in and sort of hang out and just kind of see what evolves. <laughs> Yama. <laughs> Yama. Yama. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming out. It's a great night. I really like Brahms. Yeah, I like Brahms. It's coming back. It's going to take a moment. <laughs> a few moments. <laughs>